Welcome back. This Sunday, book lovers will spend the day at Palm Springs High School for the annual Palm Springs Book Festival to check out the latest books to hit the shelves this year and, of course, talk to the authors. William Mann is the author of the provocative biography on Katherine Hepburn appropriately called Kate, and he joins us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. So what made you want to do a biography on Katharine Hepburn, the, one of the greatest Hollywood legends? Well, it, it, exactly. That's why. Because mm -hmm. when, when she died, I remember seeing the outpouring of affection. I was in San Francisco. I was on a book tour for something else, and I came downstairs, and I saw these people gathered around the television set. One woman was crying, and I said, what's happened? What's gone on? And it turns out that it was Katherine Hepburn had, had just passed away, mm. and, I, and I saw this outpouring of affection. I went back to New York, and I went by her house in Turtle, uh, Turtle Bay, and there were flowers piling up outside her wow. house. And I said, this woman, this woman was 96. She, she created herself, she turned herself into a symbol of the American character in so many ways. Sure. And I said, I want to know, how did that legend begin and why was it so important to people? And she was an icon for sure. Now, your book talks a lot about what Catherine or Kate, what she was really like, right? She called herself Kath, not right, Kate. That's right. And what she was like in real life versus her image. That's right. And what was so fascinating to me was how much she really thought about her image and how much she kind of controlled what other people saw of her. Right. She didn't want us to know that quite so much. She was uh -huh. very careful about her public image. She called it the creature. She said, that's not me, that's mm -hmm. the creature. And, you know, she wanted us to think that, oh, acting was a bore, stardom was a bore, it just kind of happened along the way. Sure. In fact, she was very careful, very conscious of creating that public image. And to me, that makes her more interesting. N not less. Absolutely. When you were doing your research, I'm sure it was absolutely fascinating. There's lots of little tidbits I'm sure that you learned. Anything that sticks out in your mind that were just was really surprising to you? I think it was when she was a young girl and she, she was sitting there with her, her brothers and, her, and sitting with her father and she announced that she wanted to be the most famous woman in the world that, as a very, very young girl. And she, she did. She became the most famous woman, woman in the world. She didn't really care as what? She, mm -hmm. at, the, at that time, she didn't say, I want to be a great actress. She just wanted to be famous. Only later did she really then uh, become you know, more in attentive to her, her craft, to the craft of acting. I think she became a, a pretty good actress. Sure. But in the beginning, it was really all about fame. And it's remarkable to see how that childhood dream came to came to reality. You, you talk a little bit, or a lot about her relationship, of course, the, the infamous, the love relationship between her and Spencer Tracy. Sure. What did you kind of find out about that relationship that maybe the average fan wouldn't necessarily know? Well, you know, I think she wanted us to believe that it was the, the great fairy tale romance of, of Hollywood, that it lasted for 36 years. Mm -hmm. I think in the beginning it was perhaps that way. I think it was, it w was romantic. It was um, uh, very much the way she wanted us to believe for the first couple of years. After that it changed. He was a very, very conflicted man. Right. Um, and she had lots of other interests. She had other relationships, both with men and with women. And she then en ended up you know, living her own life. They weren't together for the the full amount of time that she liked us to think. She went mm -hmm. off on tours, she really pursued her, uh, her craft as an actress. But at the end, when he was very sick, she was right there for him, and she took care of him um, at the end. You know, just because it wasn't the romantic fairy tale she wanted us to think doesn't make it doesn't mean it wasn't important. It really the, the feelings were there. Absolutely. When we're, we were talking about Kate Blanchett's portrayal of Katherine Hepburn right. in the movie The Aviator, yeah. do you think that was more of a reflection of what she was like publicly rather than what she was really like privately? Yes, I think I think Kate Blanchett did a l wonderful job, deserved that Oscar mm -hmm. uh, because she caught the legend perfectly. She got right. the legend down. The real Katherine Hepburn wouldn't have. Um, wouldn't have shared those stories about her brother who died young, about possible suicide. She wouldn't have been at that open the way she was in that movie. But but it was a good it was a good job. I mean, anyways, how did you do your research? What kinds of things did you did you go through to kind of get the the facts that you have? Well, it was really important for me not to just retell the the old familiar story. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go back and find primary sources as much as possible. So I went to her family. I got the cooperation of her brother and her sister. Oh. Um, I went to close friends who had known her for a long time. And luckily, there were letters. There were letters out there. And back in those days, people wrote letters to each other. That doesn't happen anymore. So those letters from, from Kate, but also from her friends, from her close intimates, really allowed me to see um, beyond the public image, beyond the legend, and capture the real woman. 
Well, I can't wait to talk to you. We're actually going to have a, a conversation on Sunday. I'm going to yes, be hosting right. a conversation with Willie Mann to talk about Kate. You can check us out at the Palm Springs Bo Book Festival Sunday, May 4th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Palm Springs High School. For more information, call 564-3112. And the book is just compelling. I can't wait to keep reading.